Yes, I did a poll on this movie to see what the grade prediction would be, only because I wanted to see if it would be the first time that an F was predicted. And what? Only a D? D for disappointed. Also, 11% A. <laughs> nice. So I guess this is a sequel to the Nicolas Cage Left Behind movie, only it's in the genre of Kevin Sorbo sequels to movies that aren't Kevin Sorbo movies. It's the Walking Tall 2 and 3 of Left Behind movies. In it, Sorbo takes over the role of pilot Rayford Steele. Say what you will about the Left Behind series, they have great character names. Rayford Steele, Buck Williams, Nikolai Carpathia, Reverend Pincus. I knew I was in a bit of trouble when the movie started. You know you're in for something cheap when it opens, and at first I thought it was a featurette or a trailer, but then it turned out to be the movie with a lot of stock footage. I guess it's about the rise of the Antichrist, like the subtitle suggests. But really, this is less of a movie, and more just 24-hour news talking points disguised as a film. These aren't characters here. They're walking buzzwords that practically pause for laughter or applause whenever they get to one of their winky lines. It doesn't matter what character you are here. Somewhere you will say words like fake news, the science, conspiracy, rabbit hole, misinformation, triggered, canceled. It gets to a point where it feels like parody, or AI generated a movie script out of feuding Twitter accounts. One of the characters is a conspiracy theorist who is a fast-talking, cluttered office guy with wacky homemade charts that looks exactly like this scene from It's Always Sunny, but played straight. There's COVID analogies where the rapture is called the pandemic, and I'm not even kidding, the news promotes a rapture vaccine, which... <laughs> What would that even be? I think it's supposed to be the mark of the beast. I'm not sure. News reporter Buck, who was previously played by Kirk Cameron and Chad Michael Murray, here is essentially a Tucker Carlson stand-in who gets his Twitter account taken away when he gets to the truth of the Antichrist, which at one point they even compare Obama to the Antichrist. Not only that, but the villains infiltrate the Bible app to keep people from searching for the rapture. But my favorite part is when Kevin Sorbo is outside of a vandalized church where someone spray painted on the side of it, All Souls Matter. The worst part of the movie though, the narration. My god, the awful narration. It's the kind of bad narration that's clearly an afterthought, and it's awkwardly inserted to hold your hand and explain every other scene, no matter how obvious the plot point is. You can tell these scenes weren't written to have narration. There's several points where characters are talking, and then the narration will come in just to talk over them and sum up what their conversation is. There's parts where characters are giving a speech, and the narrator cuts them off to go, Well, so what he's saying is... It happens several times, and in scenes featuring situations that the narrating character would have no knowledge of. Even the sound quality of the narration is bad. It sounds like someone's standing off-screen in the theater with a microphone. I don't know how to put it, other than when it started, it felt like the kind of narration where it would turn out to be a talking dog. Like, Rayford had many questions, so he decided to dust off that old book of answers he kept in his dresser. Anyway, that's where I come in. Hi folks, my name's Rags. The whole thing is pretty cheap, and in a way that does hurt it. This is a rapture film, and it looks like it only has about five sets. They do blow up a car in one part, though, but then the action scenes are just dumb. There's a part where hired goons are chasing Buck, who runs out the back door and hides in a dumpster, and when the bad guys go outside, they look around a little bit and are like, oh, I guess we lost him. 
I'll shoot the dumpster just to make sure. They put a couple of bullets in the dumpster, which miss Buck, and then they just leave. You know, it would have been easier if you just, I don't know, looked inside the dumpster? If I could say anything nice about it, for the most part, the acting is fine. There's some smaller roles where it's pretty questionable. But Greg Perro is decent as Buck. Sorbo is fine in it. But yeah, it goes without saying that the best one in the movie is Neil McDonough, who is way, way, way too good for this film, yet is also severely underused. I went into this thinking he was gonna be Carpathia the Antichrist, but he isn't. Bailey chases Carpathia, and the more evil he gets, the better he is, but you had Neil McDonough right there, the most charismatic actor in the film. It's wild miscasting that he isn't Carpathia. Also, the movie just ends. The last scene is Sorbo flying a tiny plane over New York City and raining religious flyers down over the public so that way they'll know what the rapture is. And then there's no credits, just a quick fade, and then Sorbo is sitting at home talking to the audience like, Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo. I know the movie you just saw seemed pretty scary, which, yeah, that was total whiplash I got there at the end. So yeah, the pull is right. It's a D minus. It really isn't funny bad. It's just pretty bad. It's like a Neil Breen movie without all of the things that make Neil Breen movies entertaining. It's bad when the more focused Left Behind movie is the YA teen love triangle one. But while you're at it, we have opened our store back up on our archive site, thecinemasnob.com, which has our DVD exclusive episodes and our movies, which yes, includes Jesus Bro. Check it out now and thanks for watching.